co? Z drugiej strony, co? Hello and welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lerke and I am coming to you from the southern part of Fyn in Denmark, where I live and next to the forest in a small house um, with my partner and my little girl. And as you probably know already, I am pretty pregnant, <laughs> heavily pregnant with um, a little boy that we are expecting in about a month and a half from now. Um, and I have a lot to talk about for this episode, so I hope you have a cup of tea or something. I'm as always sipping on my loose green leaf um, organic mango tea, which mm, I really enjoy. By the way, if you like green tea, remember not to use more than 80 degrees um, Celsius water because it will get bitter. This one is never bitter when I make it because it's just really delicious that way. Um, and <laughs> now talking about tea, that was totally not the point because I, I have recorded this intro a couple of times. I keep forgetting something. I have a lot to talk about. And one of the things, the main thing to talk about, if you've watched my last episode or you follow me on Instagram, you will know that I am launching my own Godland yarn um, and it will happen on Friday, but I will talk much more about the yarn, all the details. I got so many questions about the yarn and patterns and stuff that I decided to talk much more about it in the end of the video. That way, if you're not interested in my yarn or just all the details, because if you're not going to buy it, maybe it's not really that interesting for you, then you can just skip that part in the end. I promise that will be only about that. And also I did an Insta story, which I saved. That is all about where I tried to answer some of the questions because just sitting and writing um, answers to emails and messages and so on, it gets a little bit tiring. So it's much easier for me to try to, uh, to reply in video form. Um, yeah, I've actually also been knitting a lot. So let's just start with all the normal knitting content. Um, I think it's because I'm really busy at the moment. I have three tests running at the same time. I have, um, I have of course, trying to set up the Etsy shop because it, it changed a lot since last time I used Etsy, which is probably already a long time ago. It's, it's been maybe five years since I last used it and so much has happened. So it took a lot of my time. I'm trying to figure out everything around the the shop update which again i won't talk about now but it's just what i've been busy with and also i have my teaching jobs and so on so i've been really busy and i at the same time i have to take it easy so my way to try to take it easy and get my mind off things is by trying to knit everything at the same time which i don't know what happened i'm really really casting on a lot of different things i'm trying to use up a lot of stash yarn because i'm currently um you can see the mess behind the screen here it's so messy uh we when we moved into this house we just used the upstairs as a bit of a storage in the beginning just to get settled downstairs and i really want to unpack all the stuff that is not the stuff we use every day um which of course there are some boxes with my yarn and as i'm looking through them i will i find yarn and i'm I'm just thinking if I can, can I figure out some ways to use this? So I have a lot of whips uh, that I'm, where I'm using, um, yeah, old stash yarn, which is not the yarn I would buy today, but it just has to be used up, I think. Uh, I'm not gonna sell it because the value is not really, yeah, great. Mm. So, um, but first of all, I want to talk about finished objects because I have some finished objects. And one of those objects is my socks. These are the cozy house socks, elfish, Finnish, semi-boot socks. Um, it was so much fun, by the way. 
I got so many comments from Finnish viewers, which some of them I knew of, but many of you I have you haven't commented before. And I just thought it was so lovely to realize how many people from a specific country are watching. Um, with name suggestion, I also got from people who are not Finnish, but name suggestions for these socks. Um, as I said, they remind me a lot of the um, Sami boots. They're both felted or reindeer boots, but they normally have some kind of uh, colorful like um, strings or ribbons and stuff. And I just... I really like that style and they have the pointy toes. These are a little bit pointy in the toes, but they don't have the, they're not really that pointy. Um, so I finished them. I have two now. I got the second skein from the shop and they are absolutely the most wonderful, cozy thing you can imagine. They knit up super fast. My testers seem to have loved the pattern. Um, I, th They are not completely done. I still have waiting for a few more testers. Uh, and I, as I gave them until the 1st of December, <laughs> they are on track. Um, but I just wanted to talk about them. I'm not going to keep this pattern super secret. It's really simple. I It has a little seam down the front, like not a seam, but slip stitches. And down the back, which is one of the very simple details, but that keeps it a little more interesting. And of course, the Latvian braid uh, with an extra little braid. I... They just they have enough detail to make them fun to make, but without being super complicated. And they knit up so fast in this yarn. This is Alafa Slopi, which is like a big sister brother to the Let Lopi that most of you know. It's pretty much the same yarn, just thicker. Um, and I use this very beautiful thing. It's called Grey Tweed. Um, and I use uh, two strands held together of uh, Let Lopi. So here you can actually see the difference. So this is the Let Lopi and this is the Alaphas Lopi. Of course, now they have they have been blocked and they unwind a little bit. So they're really easy to make, fun socks. The pattern will be out in December. Uh, I want to have it out s as soon as possible, but still, I need to... Oh. Oh, there was a really big bird flying over the house. Um, yeah. <laughs> and yes, do I have more to say? I talked more about them last time. I think I will talk a little bit more about them when I launch them. That's normally what I do. So I don't want to keep saying the same stuff over and over. They will come in three sizes, small, medium and large, which is just the circumference. And yeah, I have to make some really cozy pictures of these, which is going to be fun. So I finished that. They were almost finished last time. And um, I've been writing down all the name suggestions and I will try to pick a name sometimes uh, before I launch the pattern, of course, but I have to try to pick a name. Oh. If I, It seems like I'm rushing. It's I feel like I have a lot to talk about. I don't think I ever had two full pages written for an update, but I have to remember everything. Um, yes, then I knit a little tiny pair of baby bloomers and this is why I say that I'm using up stash yarn because <laughs> this yarn is actually, it's a drops yarn, it's a drops alpaca, it's not normally what I uh, work with or yeah I don't, I have my issues with drops but I'm also the kind of person I will not throw out anything and I mean maybe acrylic yarn I would donate or do something with but I kept the yarn I bought it like when I was a teenager early in my early 20s um, to make like a Totoro sweater I had this idea that I would make this huge sweater in Totoro colors so I have a gray and a white and this one and, but I didn't really yeah have much idea of how to make the sweater so I was just trying things and it never worked out and this yarn is not that fun to knit with because oh by the way these are the bloomers and they're adorable um it's not that great to work with because it has little loops and you I keep poking my needle into the loops and those loops are not like it has a lot of little loops on the let me just show a little bit better yeah, you can maybe get the sense there's a lot of little loops and yeah, I keep poking my needle into the loops. Um, so I find it really frustrating. 
but it's also really cozy and soft and squishy and everything that you want for a pair of baby bloomers. Um, these are actually not completely finished because I need to, uh, I have an elastic in here, I need to stitch it with the, um, on the sewing machine of course, uh, or I can do it by hand, but I just need to stitch it somehow and weave in this little end to close up the hole. I just pretty much invented the pattern as I went along. I knitted in the round, I did some short rows on the back so it has a little more shaping and it's a little higher. Um, I folded down the brim and I attached it uh, except from here so I could add in the elastic and I did a little garter uh, ribbing on the legs. It, this yarn is so forgiving because you cannot really see if you're doing garter or um, stuck in it. Uh, just very easy to make something with. So I thought, and I did the uh, three needle bind off here, which again is almost invisible in this yarn. Um, so I just had a pair of baby pants in the newborn size next to me when I was knitting these. So I could just check more or less for how long to do the body and like the, the, the length and also, um, the, the width so that was more or less what I did but they're really simple and I think most of you would be able to figure out something similar um, if you have been knitting for some time I'm not gonna write down a pattern there are plenty of bloomer patterns it was just I couldn't I didn't want to buy one for this yarn and it, I knit them on a pretty large needles now I don't remember even the needle size as you see it was just like it has to be easy I don't want to think too much or write anything down or do anything so, um, those were finished objects and I have, oh, I totally forgot, I have a Christmas star. Let me just get the Christmas star. Yes. So as maybe you can sense, I've been working on so many different things, mainly because I don't have a big project at the moment. So a while back I started these little stars and I already showed you one and now I finished the second one and they are just really adorable, really fun to make. Um, just the end can be a little bit fiddly because you kind of <laughs> had to go up and down the stairs. Um, yes, you, you work them, you cast on, on the outside, quite a big number actually, and then you work with six needles so you have to have six of the same size and you make the double centered um, decrease until the middle and then you pick up stitches and you do the same on the other side which in the end you have to stuff it and then close the hole and stuff but it's just a fun little project and it's a free pattern i will link it down below um, what else can I say about these? I made them quite puffy because I think they're so cute, puffy. And I wanted to make some more. Um, it's just in some old, I think, linen yarn that's not very soft. I found it uh, probably some yarn from my grandmother, my mom. Uh, but it has a nice rustic look to it, not too soft. And the color is really beautiful too. It's uh, a little bit off-white but not too creamy because I don't like very creamy whites especially for Christmas and stuff I just want them to be white white so I have two of them and maybe I will start another one at some point but they are <laughs> I have to catch my breath in some way there's not much lung space for my <laughs> for breathing anymore so I'm just yeah it's the way it is yeah, I wanted to make some more, but they, these are just like little in-between projects. And I'm happy I started in good time because this way I'm not feeling too... I don't want to have to sit and make Christmas ornaments like crazy. But I can recommend this pattern. So, um, I forgot to say one thing in the beginning, so I think I will just stop and mention that before I go on to works in progress. I just wanted to say what I'm wearing and talk a little bit about something in my hair which I don't know if you can see but I got this beautiful beautiful hairpin it's sticking out here too uh, I just got it in the mail today it's um, made by the wonderfully sweet and talented Nina of the um, fox and the sheep 
podcast or fox, fox and sheep on instagram oh nina if i say it wrong it's like you all i know how to say them when i have to say it on camera i always blank a little bit i guess i think it happens to other podcasters too oh. but i met nina at eyf um in the spring and she's just super talented she makes this beautiful nasty pin and i really wanted to get one but there are two things one they're quite expensive but i don't think they're even expensive for the amount of time she puts into them they're hand carved and they are painted and they're so beautiful but of course it's a price you have to think about if it if it's if you're gonna use it and if it will be something that makes sense for you so the thing is i'm not really i wind most of my balls in hand by hand and um I'm not patient enough to sit and do it with a nasty pin. <laughs> I think I tried a bit at uh, using one of um, Nina's. So just for some time, I was thinking I really wanted to get something from her. But if I got a nasty pin, it would just be sitting in a glass or something and looking pretty, but I wouldn't have a purpose for it. And then I saw she made this shawl pins or like uh, to close a cardigan or shawl. And they looked, she made some with feathers, a little bit similar to this one, but just the feather was bigger and the stick was shorter. And then I got the idea, actually because I watched, was it Emma from Woolly Mammoth Fiber, Mammoth Fiber who talked about the hairpin? I think it was. Anyway, I was, uh, I watched on a podcast, someone who talked about hairpins, I think it was Emma. And uh i just remembered that i had this hairpin once my hair is getting long again and i lost it and i really liked it um it's a good way to put up the hair that's not uh, too tight on the head like with an elastic or something so i wrote nina and asked if she would make me one um, if i could make a custom order of course and she agreed we talked about what to get put on it and I and it ended up being this I said it could be some like a leaf a feather an acorn maybe animals are a little too big to have in the hair I think um, and she just created this it's absolutely beautiful I love that the, the wood is a bit lighter here and it is so smooth and it's made from apple wood I think she said and it's just it's so perfect so I can highly recommend working with any of like yeah custom orders or henna stipinne or anything else from her she's just super talented so thank you nina and it came with the mail today it just took one day or two days i'm just so excited i think it's gonna stay in my hair all day um and i'm wearing my fia cardigan which i released earlier this year it has this caliper cable detail down the side and it's one of the few cardigans i can still fit because it's a uh, boxy fit so i can actually close it in front even if i have the belly it's just a little bit short but that doesn't really matter um so that's what i'm wearing and it's out of a uh, used wool um they will have some more of this uh, the can uh, kanach yes it's the kanach uh, wool in the osna colorway they will have more for eyf and maybe also, it will not be exactly the same colorway, but they contacted me and let me know that there will be more in case anyone is interested. So, yes. As you can hear, I have so much to talk about. It's going to be a long episode today. Oh. So, works in progress. I have... Um, I've been working on my Mondim socks that I showed you last time. Um... This is the, oh, the yarn, Mondim, from Retrosaria in uh, Lisbon. And I just cast on for very simple vanilla, vanilla sock. Yeah, I can call it a vanilla sock. It just has some twisted ribbing and I'm doing, as you can see, I'm a little bit obsessed with this detail. I'm doing the slip stitch, um, like fake seam uh, again. This one I'm just working on whenever I'm in the train or at the doctor's or yeah, just have a moment. It's I love the nine inch circular needles just to drop them into the bag. I don't have the stitches don't come off as much as I feel they or it's not as tangly. Um and it's just like a nice little thing to 
pull out of your bag you don't have to sit there with the um, magic loop or suck uh, double, double pointed needles or anything so and the colorway is very nice it's a, gonna be a very cozy sock when it's done this is the 209 the colorway 209 and i don't have much more else to say about them i just wanted to show that i'm working on these whenever i have some time um and i really like it it's a very nice yarn i can it's a very nice yarn so uh, also i have i'm working on again drops yarn oh god um <laughs> this is some of the stash yarn i talked about and actually uh, it's i bought this again long time ago for i think some baby blanket i was making it's a little less uh, no i think actually the color is okay um and it's a merino like i think it's the big merino and it's very like has this very bouncy spinning um and yeah it's not yarn i'm i have the thing is when i was younger and i started to knit i, I just things had to be cheap i would buy cheap yarn i wouldn't think too much about it it's funny when i think about it, i grew up with organic very rustic yarn but maybe that's I don't know, I was a, as a teenager, I guess many of us go through this. We don't have much money, things have to be cheap. And uh, yeah, so I, I used to buy a lot of drops at that time. So I have some in my stash. And as I said, I don't like wasting things. So I was, uh, it's getting really cold here. Um, and I wanted to make, a, I think again, it's called a balaclava for my daughter. Um, and I there is a free pattern in Danish on... Uh, Fairwool, the website called Fairwool, um, for one, and it needs to be a rather thick yarn because it's knit up and I think she holds several strands together, but I didn't have anything to enough to hold together that I thought would go well together, and I had this yarn that would work for the size six um, needles, so I thought, okay, I'm just gonna make this one because this one is gonna be for the kindergarten, and it will get dirty and <laughs> thrown around and I will just leave it down there so it would be one that she can wear when she's in kindergarten and she needs a warm hat to wear so I'm just I just cast this on today just want to have it done really fast it's gonna be quick on the the pattern is really cute by the way it has it comes with ears like bunny ears and fox ears um I will leave a link for the free pattern but as I said it's in Danish uh, and I don't know if I can do anything about that um but we really use as i think i said last time we use a lot of balaclavas i still don't know if that's the real name oh, i should look things up before starting podcasting but uh yeah we use a lot of this uh, hats that only leaves the face free and that has the the color um in the winter here because it's just the most easy thing to deal with with kids i think with small children so and i have been working on some color work mitts mittens uh because as i talked i also got a lot of suggestions by the way on gloves that i could do i haven't still haven't decided exactly what i'm gonna do and i maybe i will just do it slowly and i can still wear the other ones i have so it's not a problem but i wanted to do some color work mitts mittens um so again trying to use some of my uh, stash yarn i picked up this beautiful yarn from uh, used wool again um let me get the ball bands because this one is a different one this is the sith it's a four ply from used wool i got this at eyf it's a um it's a mix between different uh She's about 100% wool uh, and it's a DK weight. And together with this, I got the same yarn, but that had been dyed by Old Maiden Aunt in, um, yeah, in these two colorways. So this is the uh, one from Juist without dye. And this one is, oh, it's just so beautiful. Look at how the dye is, it's like tonal and you can see the gray underneath and the warm, there's like gray, but also warm tone under 
and my idea was to make color work with these. Um, so that was the plan. They're very rustic yarns, very beautiful and rustic, and I just didn't really like how they knit up in color work. Uh, uh, first of all, the contrast is not that great, but I just saved this little piece so I can show you. Of course, on camera, it never looks so bulky. I don't know if it's bulky, but it's just, it, I didn't really like how it doesn't, I don't know. There's something about it I was not super happy about. So I just decided instead of being unhappy with this and not feeling 100%, I would much rather use the yarn for something else. I still don't know what I'm going to use it for because I really want to have uh, sections where you can see the the um, yeah where you can see this beautiful uh not mild effect how you say yeah, variegated effect this uh dye has so i will have to figure something out maybe a hat maybe i will make a hat sometime but it's not gonna be the mitts uh but i can show you the cuff so this was the cuff i made uh i designed the cuff myself and the plan was to have it together with the um, the mittens called um, Mimi's Norwegian Selbu mittens or mittens just there that's also a free pattern on Ravelry mm. and I just wanted to have a different cuff because that cuff is just the, the standard I'm looking I didn't have them here it's just the standard uh, ribbed cuff um, with stripes and so I knit up Another version in these two that I showed you last time, which now looks they look very messy, which is the Jameson two ply jumper weight and um, yeah Jameson and Smith uh, in the in the grey color, which I don't remember what is, and in the uh, seventy eight mix, uh, no eighty seven mix. Uh, which is a purple, heathery, very beautiful color with many different, with a lot of depth. Uh, this is what I have left of the purple and I don't know if it's enough for the second mitten. So that's always great. Um, I feel like I'm very, I start a lot of, uh, cast on a lot of things without being super um, organized about it. So maybe I don't have enough yarn or maybe I'm not... I haven't thought really it's I, I think it's because I've been designing some bigger things and I really wanted I had to be very precise about that and now I just feel like oh, I'm just gonna knit stuff and not think too much but I I finished the mid, uh, mitten and I will get it because it's been downstairs drying getting a bit warm I'm just next to the heating um yes so I made it again with the same it's actually a little bit different but with um the cuff that i designed more or less because i thought it would be nice to have some kind of interest there and this is the pattern the free pattern on ravelry and the top it actually has four repeats but my hands are not that big so i did a little modification on the top as well um and it's still missing the thumb but what happened is I'm, uh, I thought it looked so wonky again. I was really unhappy with it. And I just thought, okay, I have to try to block this. If this is not turning out nicely, I'm just going to frog it. I'm not going to spend more time on this. But actually the blocking, as you can see, <laughs> I'm just so out of breath in this episode. Oh God. <coughs> mm. As you can see, the blocking did did the, the trick. And I actually haven't put them on any mitten blockers or anything. I just squished out the water and laid them flat to dry. They smell extremely sheepy after blocking or when I was washing them. And um, I can try to put them on, on carefully because they are super wet. Oops, I don't want to stretch it out too much. But here you go. As you see, they fit. Um, maybe they could have been a tiny bit longer, but I just had to figure out yeah some kind of length i can stretch them out a little bit now that they're wet and i will add in the thumb i'm missing a few stitches here but i will duplicate them in and for some reason i don't know what happens it was the same when i did the mini selbu i mess up the back of the hand i guess i'm too focused on the front um 
and I mean it looks fine there's nothing wrong with this pattern it's just not the pattern I was supposed to do it was supposed to do, do be like a crisscross pattern and instead it's just like a one 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 how you call this like lice but many of them it doesn't matter it's really thick and wonderful and I really like the cuff uh, how it turned out uh, it's just like a little little branch little branches and some gata rib not a gata rib yeah it's the edge but like gata instead of ripping so i hope i have enough for the second mitten if i don't maybe i will, will wait to do the thumbs and then i can just do white thumbs that would be a little bit boring i don't know what i'm gonna do but i'm happy uh, and i can now maybe make yeah give you some peace of mind if you're worried that your 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 color work knitting looks a bit wonky it really just try to block it for a second because this helps so much um it's not so much with the tension because the tension was great but then just some of the stitches were like looking not as nice as i wanted the pattern was not as clear uh, to see as i wanted so color work mitten a little bit of a yeah different designs put together but this is the free pattern from oh and i have to say with this pattern i this is now a fingering weight yarn i'm using and the pattern is written for dk for this one was a dk but i really don't see the difference i'm knitting these on a three millimeter which is not i was not supposed to i wasn't supposed to knit them on a 3.5 for the small size um and again they're shorter and i don't know if what's but people have were complaining that there was no gauge in the pattern just like go up needle or down needle sizes for the different sizes so be careful when you knit these i had to start over a couple of times to get the right needle size and everything so mm. i got some tea leaves <laughs> from the tea it happens sometimes uh i have to put this one down to dry again oh, here okay um let me think if there's anything else i want to mention in whips uh, i think that's all i think the rest of the episode will be about the launch of my godland yarn so in case you're not interested it was very lovely to talk a little bit about knitting for this part of the episode and i hope to see you next time and if you're interested in the shop update and in my yarn and hear about the background and my thoughts and everything a lot of talk about godland yarn then just stay put and maybe get some tea because we need some tea yes so the yarn in question and i've been showing it all over and talk talking about it so much so you've probably already seen this is this this is the yarn i have uh, had spun up from uh, it's fleece from my parents sheep um, and my parents own a small organic farm um, in the southern part of Fyn, not so far away from from where i live it's a certified organic farm um, and they have Gotland sheep. They have a small flock of Gotland sheep that uh, live a really calm and peaceful life on the farm. It's a hobby farm in the way that they used to work. And uh, now they're both retired, so they don't work anymore. But uh, it was never their main uh, focus to live from the farm, just to have the animals because they really love to have animals. For them, um, having the farm organic, it's all about animal welfare and uh, sustainability and trying to farm in a way that's not harmful to the environment and so on so no pesticides none of these things and um yeah uh, as i said it's certified so they're, they're they're checking them um they have to be how you say um there, there's a control of how they run the farm and yes they had yarn spun up uh, before when I was a child, I remember yarn being spun up. Um, but this is the first time that I have been more involved in the process. 
I used to as a child sit and watch my dad uh, shear the sheep. I really loved watching that. Uh, it was just really cozy and calm watching how he did it. And um, I just, yeah, it's always been part of my life that we had sheep, but I was never really that involved. And so I, I had the idea, I asked him if maybe it would be possible I could buy some of the yarn, uh, the fleece and uh, have it spun up. And he was okay with that, so we collected the, um, it's from two shearings, so I think autumn and spring, um, when they shear the sheep. And we uh, made two piles of a light and a dark pile, because as I talked about before, here you can see a pelt uh, from the same sheep. And Gotland sheep come in different colors, they have this very beautiful silvery grey color. Now this one has been cut, so this is after shearing, so it won't show the normally they're much longer. Um, but you can see that they can be almost pretty much black and the silvery gray, and sometimes they even have some brown, uh, brown outer layer. Um, Gotland sheep has one layer, one coat. It doesn't have the outer and the inner coat. It's just like a mix. That's also why it has these really long, shiny hairs um, in the fleece. And uh, yeah, we made two, like we separated into two colors and we went to the local mill. So I had my dad with me for the first time because I never tried doing this before and I just wanted to have his, he didn't mind helping me. Um, so it was really nice to do this together. We went to the local mill and uh, which is an old family run mill called Jelholt Ulspinneri. And it is just, I really like going there because they do woolen spun, they don't do superwash. You can buy also worsted spun, but generally it's woolen spun from them. And yes, as I said, non superwash and just a very lovely local family run business and uh, very old. And it's one of the only two spinning mills in Denmark where you can have your yarn spun. Um, but this is the only one that does small amounts. So I talked to him, we agreed how to make the, try to do the two colors. And the thing is when you spin or when they spin, how their machines work, when they spin up the Gotland yarn, they have to add a little bit, well, almost always have to add a little bit of um, Merino wool. They add Merino Falkland, uh, Falkland to, um, to make the spinning possible. Um, with these yarns, this one had a little bit added. Um, I think it's, 12% or something. I calculated it yesterday of the of all of the wool and this one had the double so around 25 24 25 and the reason for that is uh, that these staples were just sh too short and they actually had to re-spin it and he wrote me a note that uh, they had to start over and add in more merino because it didn't wouldn't spin up but they feel the same. I mean, you can't really feel any difference. Um, it's still the Gotland that you feel. Um, so yeah, so it's just to explain that this yarn comes from organic Gotland sheep um, from my parents' farm with a bit of Merino, Falkland Merino mixed in um, just to, I want to be really transparent about how this yarn is made. But if I forget to say something, it's more about <laughs> me having too many things uh, to mention. I really love how the color colors turned out. This one has such a beautiful little bit heathered effect. They're both heathered, but it's just very beautiful yarn. Um, it has some white, like the white shining through, darker grays. And this one, the same, but it's charcoal. In the shop, this one will be the medium gray when I put it in the Etsy shop, and this one is called charcoal. I will have 50 skeins of each up in the first shop update. Um, and so 100 in total, and I hope I can manage that. I think it will be okay. Um, so just because uh, I am pregnant and working other jobs and all that stuff, I put the... Um, the shipping or the, the to process the order to one to two weeks, I think it will be much faster, but I've never done it before. And I just want to make sure I'm not creating some bad situation where I'm, yeah, it's too much work. So uh, just to explain why it sounds like it will take a long time to get the yarn. Hopefully it will be really fast uh, 
and no problem but yes so uh, let me just think um yeah i'm really i'm really in love with these two colorways i created them, and actually i wanted to create them as close to the natural color but also because i ha i made this this is my first sweater design that i published it's my retour sweater um it's knitted in the same uh, Gotland wool but from a previous batch so it's not the same batch as this one but from the same sheep uh, and the, from the same mill and the same thickness and this sweater is it's so soft and lovely it's um i just played with these two colors and i wanted to have the same i wanted to be able to have the same so they are not 100% the same this one is a tiny bit lighter than this one but really not that much as you can see it's really little and this one is maybe a tiny bit lighter too so they're just like a, in, a little bit lighter than the ones i originally knitted in but i think it would create the same effect and that was what i really wanted i um yes in i will talk a little bit more about this pattern but i just wanted to show you how the yarn looks when it's knit up um it becomes it gets this fluffy halo and in some ways i think it's uh, very similar to when you work with mohair that it has this fluff on the outside um it's not this kind of woolen spun super bouncy yarn it's more of a let's see if i can show you like it's a little more tight and um it is woolen spun but it's not so bouncy it's a little more tight and doesn't have a lot of give um it's very sturdy in the way that it doesn't break and we have sweaters made from godland yarn that are 30 years old and they're still looking really fine the only thing that happens is it blooms but not in the puffing up kind of way it just gets all this fluff i have a baby blanket that my mom knit for my daughter so this is like for the outside when she's sleeping outside um it's held with a with two strands held together so it's on a much it's very heavy and drapey and as you can see it, it gets this beautiful fluff um, it doesn't come off and itch your nose or uh, it's annoying in any way it's just very soft but it's still a bit itchy so it's like this kind of very soft and squishy for example if you wear it on the neckline and it if you sweat a little bit or get warm it can have a little bit of itch to it that you will find in many yarns like the icelandic too and so on when they have this longer stables mixed in it just creates a little more possibility for itch but uh, if you are very sensitive i don't think it's that bad um but as you can see in this blanket it's a very yeah it's a very drapey and has a little bit of shine to it still but it's not as shiny and it's it's hard to explain because it's a little very it's different from other yarns i know um so i'm trying to find the right words uh it's definitely a rustic yarn so you have to like rustic yarns um but when i feel it in the skein it's little more rough and then when you knit it up it just softens so beautifully um emma from woolly mammoth fiber she has uh, she's dying naturally dying on different bases but she has a godland blue face lester base i think and she was talking about how she really wanted to make a no frills sweater which is uh, i think you all know it by petite knits but it's held uh, normally you hold it with a strand of mohair and with the Gotland yarn, you don't have to do that. You will get that effect without mohair, but it's much warmer, I think. It's a very warm yarn. Um, so I think that's a really good idea. If you think about what to knit with this yarn, think something you would use mohair with. So it cannot be, you don't wanna have a really strong stitch definition because it will kind of get lost. But at the same time, you can, and you want something it gets a little fussy so you don't want if you it it cannot be the focus on the pattern uh, the stitch definition cannot be the focus or the texture cannot be the focus but it's good for color work too my mom made many sweaters color work sweaters with this yarn and as you can see in this one it looks 
very special in brioche because it kind of softens the look of brioche where brioche can sometimes look very um very harsh and I, that's actually how i got the idea for this one i just thought it would look beautiful and brioche and you can see here i have some little bit of color work it will also be much um, softer looking because of the fluff it gets um yeah so i yes i wanted to talk about that i wanted to talk about what kind of patterns are good because i got a lot of questions about it uh what if you can use my patterns for it and from my from my patterns i would recommend this one of course and uh, i would also recommend uh, my uh, dry headband which of course right now is downstairs i'm not gonna run downstairs again i showed it in my instagram stories i've showed it bef shown it before on the podcast and it's um, a free pattern so you would just need one skein to make that this one uh, requires a little more <laughs> yardage uh, for the smaller size it's three skeins of the main color and one skein of the of the yolk um, and for many of the sizes there's only one skein of the yolk uh, for the yolk contrast i made a discount code so if you buy three skeins you will get a 25 percent discount on the um, on the pattern on the retour pattern you just have to write me a little note saying retour in when you do the you buy the yarn and i will send you the discount code because i thought maybe you don't want to use these two colors maybe you want to have a contrast of a different color um so in case you're just buying for the main body either the light gray or the dark gray uh, i will give you a discount for them for the pattern so uh and you have you will have to go and look on my project or on the design page to see how much yarn you need this one is cropped so just bear in mind that if you don't want it cropped if you want it longer that you have to buy extra yarn and um, that's also why i'm not doing kits first of all i don't want to make it too complicated for myself but also i'm not doing kits just to keep it simple in terms of if you want to make modifications you want to maybe add a color instead um, you can see some beautiful examples on the ravelry page um in the project pages what people have done i've seen one that's uh, reversed so you have the light on the bottom and the dark on the top i wanted to say um about what did i want to say yes i wanted to mention that i have um the mill that spins the yarn uh, they have their own yarn as well, which is also made from a mix from Merino and um, mainly Gotland yarn. And that one is called Dansk Pelsun. Uh, sorry, I'm supposed to cover this one because th that part is not. Uh, called Dansk Pelsun. Uh, and you can't buy it from the website, but you can get it many places. And they have colors. I don't know if you can see this color is like a mauve gray color. Um, that are compatible it's the same thickness not this one though but the one that's called 5.52 i will leave a link down below so you can see what the colors are and you will have to look online if you can get it anywhere so that would be an option for example to to do the brioche like these two or even with this one or you could find other colors that maybe have a little more contrast um but the Dansk Pelsul, the 5.52, is the same thickness as uh, the yarn I had spun up. Um, I also know that Tupo hand dyed. She um, natural, naturally dyes uh, yarn from this spinning mill, so the same kind of yarn. Uh, and she has some beautiful, beautiful colors. Um, I think it's called her the one that's called two on her website but just ask her to be sure so you, if you want to get from her you get the same uh, thickness also uh, because this one is thinner there's also one called 8.2 and it's the, the names are a little bit confusing so just think so you don't get the wrong one you have to get the one called 5.52 um, and i know there's also another danish girl doing natural naturally dyed yarn uh, she's called Uns Ull. And she also dies on 
uh, Gotland wool, but I'm not quite sure what her yarn is, so you would have to ask her. Just to give you some options, if you want to pair this kind of yarn with colored, I, I think it's nice to pair it with the Gotland's, the, the Got, Gotland yarn as well. Um, I think that's all for this one. Um, as you can see, I wanted to talk a little bit about the gauge. This is a gauge I would definitely recommend. Um, it's very, it's quite dense, and as I said, as you knit with it, it fills out. It can look a little bit uh, thin at first, but then it just fills out the holes. It's beautiful in the um, uh, linen stitch, as I used on the edges. Uh, it's very light, not heavy, but also very warm. And of course, up here you have the double, so it's very squishy. The um, for this one, I had a stitch. The the gauge is a uh, twenty stitches per uh, ten centimeters or four inches, and twenty six rows. Um, it's a little bit confusing. I mean, you can use many different needle sizes with this yarn, as I showed in the baby blanket that was held double. Um, and it works with many uh, different needle sizes because or gauges I should say because needle sizes depends on your the way you knit but you can knit it up in different gauges because it, it can work as a more uh, open knit or a more tight knit but if it gets too dense it will be uh, less flexible and less drapey and so on so it really depends what you need it for I um, only thing that's a bit confusing for me still is on the on Ravelry, you can find the dense pencil. As I said, I will link it down below, which is the same, the same thickness and the same way method of spinning as the one I had made. And it says it's a um, spot weight, but I would really say this is more like a DK to light worsted. Uh, it knits up as a DK to light worsted. It's um, it works better on a f four millimeter needles. Oh, I forgot to say it's knit on a four millimeters, uh, which is a US six. Uh, I think that's where I like it the best. Of course, depends on how you tension, what your gauge is with this yarn, what needle size you use. But uh, it, I don't know if it's a confusion between, in Denmark, we don't really use yarn weights, uh, why it's put up on Ravelry like that or what it is. Um, with one skein you have 275 meters and I tried to check it a little bit and it it is somewhere between a sport and a, the DK light worsted so yeah I guess this yarn falls in a, its own category which I think you shouldn't just I got a lot of questions about it that's why I'm trying to explain it but you should really see what kind of make a swatch and see how you like the fabric um, but I can say for me this Having twenty stitches per ten centimeters, it's a nice, um, it's a nice gauge, I think, with this yarn. Again, depending on what you want to make. Um, for patterns, I can suggest like sweaters, outer garments. You wouldn't wear this too. I mean, of course, it can touch uh, the the skin, but I wouldn't wear it uh, without anything under. Again, we're all different. And um, I would suggest using it for shawls. It can be really, really warm shawls. Uh, baby blankets like this one for outside will keep very warm. Um, headbands, uh, maybe hats. But again, be aware that if it's on the forehead, it might be a bit itchy if you're sensitive to that. So yeah, you have to see how, how you like the yarn, but it's not that itchy. I'm just putting it out there. Uh, some people are very sensitive. So it's a rustic yarn. Keep that in mind. And I have decided because I have some, when I got the the bags of yarn, I had some skeins that were not hundred grams. I guess they were like leftover skeins, and I cannot sell those. I don't want to sell those. I could do it, but I just they're not that many, and I can keep them for myself. So what I thought to do is I wanted to. Um, make something for myself with this yarn and I it's like sometimes things just come together and I found the perfect project because um, I was watching uh, Nicole from the Gentle Knitter's podcast and she was talking about that she wanted to make 
she's going to make a cal together with uh, Sarah from Piper Trek, which I met at EYF and she was so sweet. Um, we talked about this one actually because I was wearing it and she came to talk to me. Oh, she was just really lovely. And I, those two ladies are doing a cal uh, where they want to use like rustic yarns to knit the, um, let me just check so I don't say it wrong, the name is the um, Hedgewitch Shawl by Nat um, Redwolf and it's a beautiful shawl, I will put a picture in here, it's a beautiful shawl, giant shawl and uh, it has these two colors and I think this will be so perfect for this yarn, it will, uh, um, I would um, use the light color on the, so this one I would use for the main body of the shawl and this one for the garter edge. I think it will be so beautiful. Uh, you need uh, exactly what would be two skeins for the main body and um, two skeins for the for the garter edge because it's on the end. So even if it's not that much, I guess you will need some extra. And it has enough texture that I think will show beautifully in this yarn. And then it's just the, yeah, just the yarn gets to uh, sing. <laughs> and I I am gonna join that cal. They are starting it up. I think it's something from full moon to full moon. Um, so I want to join that cal with my own yarn and make this pattern. It's absolutely beautiful. And I. Yeah, again, you would need four skeins in case you would be interested to joining, in joining with this yarn. Uh, actually, it was one of my testers, I think, who wrote me that she wanted to use, the, if I've seen this also, and yeah, so she's planning maybe to use it, and I think it would be a lot of fun to use this yarn for the shawl. So something along, something can have some texture, but it shouldn't be anything too defined, uh, would be perfect for this kind of yarn. So... I'm really excited to join this cal. I think it would be perfect to knit on over Christmas and just have also, I'm not sure I can manage in one month because the baby is gonna arrive at that time. But yeah, it's uh, it will be a lot of fun to join in with these two wonderful ladies. If you haven't watched the podcast, which I'm sure you have, just go and give them a look. Uh, they're very calm and uh, beautiful podcast with a lot of love for rustic wool, so something I definitely uh, can get really inspired by. I, yeah, I think I said most, most things, yes. Okay, the only thing I wanted to talk a little bit about is Ravelry and the practical, uh, not Ravelry, sorry, Etsy and the practical stuff. Um, I tried to put as much info as I can. There will be one listing and this one listing will have the two colors. So you can pick and you can buy there's no limit. Um, I had some issues with shipping, uh, and the sh the main the standard shipping is uh, without any tracking or without any insurance. In case you want to get tracking or insurance, um, then uh, I put the price for US. Uh, if you're in Europe, it will be cheaper. So just in case you're in Europe, I will refund you some money. But that's only if you get the tracking uh, option. Um, which I think it's called Express. Uh, yeah, I call it Express. So if you choose Express and not Standard, it will just, I will return you a little bit of uh, shipping fees because Etsy is really annoying with shipping. I couldn't put it exactly the easiest, the best way um, how I want it. So I tried to make something. Uh, yeah. Oh. And uh, I. I have no idea how it's going to go with the shop update, uh, but, but as I said, it's just this one listing, so you have to go into the listing and order as many as you want. And in case you cannot make it for this update, I I have some extra yarn uh, that I will make a second update, I think, if everything um, works out, as I hope. And also... Um, Yes, I haven't decided on the time I'm doing the shop update. That's what I wanted to say. So I will put it on Instagram. <laughs> I will put it in the description of this video. The exact time is on Friday, this Friday, um, the 30th but of November. But in case 
uh, I still don't know what is the best international friendly everyone hopefully can make the update so once I figured out that time also for myself what works I will put it in the description box I will put it on Instagram I know not everyone is on Instagram and I will also write it in the Etsy shop and I will leave a link for the Etsy shop uh, so it will be in the description of the Etsy shop once I have it figured out and just expect it to be a day before or something I will have the time um, and I'm trying to do my best to have everyone happy but really <laughs> there's always gonna be someone unhappy if because that's how updates and so on so please i'm not i'm trying my best um because i get a lot of messages when will it be when is it gonna happen i'm afraid to lose it and uh i i'm i just want everyone to be able to make it but it also has to be practical in some way so i think that's it for this episode i really wanted to get an episode up before the shop update um so next time hopefully we can talk about something else i'm really excited but i also I'm afraid for some of you, maybe it's getting a little overwhelming hearing all about this. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. I um, yeah, I can't wait to talk to you next time. And until then, have a lovely week. And oh, I forgot to say, that was what I wanted to say. I'm doing Vlogmas. I already did the first episode. I don't think it's going to be like every day. I don't know how much it's going to be. I'm going to film whenever there's something cozy and Christmassy going on and just a bit more. Um, I have already filmed, as I said, uh, from this last weekend and I will try to get it up some days before. I'm trying to be putting very low expectations on this in the way that I will record in good time in advance. I will upload them well in advance. Uh, the first episode will be up on the 1st of December. And what happens after that, I'm not really sure about. But I really wanted to make Vlogmas. So I'm going to try to do something and hope you will like it. So that was the last one thing I wanted to mention. I think I've talked for about an hour. It's time to stop and do something else. Again, I will see you soon. Bye.